Hello students, today we are going to look into certain topics but before I start, we'll just review what we have seen till now. So we have seen certain small sig model parameters like GM, GMB or not and each of these parameters were defined with respect to saturated region transistor. So now, And later on what we did was we built a small signal model and we tried to find the impedance through it. So today, the objective would be review the node impedance and then we will also see how to deal with the complex circuitry in order to find the node impedance of it. And the second objective would be to find equivalence transconductance. And the third one, we will get into the CS amplifier, different loads. So we are going to analyze the common source amplifier with different loads that are being connected. Now, in the first video that I would make, we'll have the first two topics and the second one for the discussion about the uh, CS amplifier will be available in part two. So without uh, no time delay, we'll just get into the topic about the review of node impedance. Now, let me take a mass device and we'll just look into uh, each node and then we will try to figure out what are those node impedances but under the assumption that the other nodes are ground. Okay, so let me put this. So let me analyze the impedance at the train under the assumption that the other two nodes gate and the source at the ground. So what is the impedance across this? Which is nothing but R0. So we have already seen this. It's just a review that I'm making. And the next thing is, we'll try to find what is the impedance across the gate. And again, I assume that the other node source and the train are connected to the ground. And I just want to look into the gate. So now what happens is, since we are trying to talk with the low frequency, I assume that there is an open circuit between the gate and the source and no current would flow to, through them. And because of that, the resistance would be infinite when I look into the gear terminal. So this discussion is applicable only for the low frequency signals that we are talking. And the next thing is, we try to figure out what is the impedance that we would find when we look into the source terminal, assuming again that the other two terminals, gate and the drain, connected to the ground. Now, what would be this impedance? And also, you have to take care whether the body is connected to the same potential as our source. Here, in this in this particular part of the circuit, the source is totally at a different potential because we know that uh, in order to find an impedance across the node, we will be attaching a voltage source Vx and then try to measure the Ix. So, in this case, my body is, is at different potential, that is my ground, whereas the source is at voltage or, or a different potential Vx. Okay. Now, because of that, what happens is there is a potential difference between the body and the source and that creates a second current, a voltage controlled current source, which we have already seen is nothing but our GMB VGS. So now that our resistance Rx would be equal to 1 by GM parallel with 1 by GMB and then R0. And we also have seen like how each of these resistors connected across different terminals. We found the 1 by GM is basically connected between the gate and the source terminal whereas this one by GMB is connected between the body and the source and this R0 is basically connected between the drain and the source. So all of these discussions were done till the last class of lecture. Now today let us, uh, let us have some circuits where either the node drain or the source which is not directly being grounded. So continuing our discussion of finding impedance for a complex circuit, we'll just take a circuit which is a common source amplifier with source degeneration resistance for this discussion. So as stated, the drain and the source were not directly connected when we translate the circuit into a small signal model. So these are these nodes are basically not connected to the grounds when we translate them to the small signal model. So first we will draw the small signal model of this particular circuit 
and then we'll try to first analyze the impedance that is seen when we look to the drain terminal for which I just take the input V in and that V in is basically connected to the gate and then the source and I draw the drain over here and whenever there is a potential difference between the gate and the source we know that there will be a current pointing from drain to source and that current is basically GM VGS and we are going to add the resistance or not just to model the channel and modulation effect and then again since our body and the source are at totally different potential we'll have another voltage controlled current source which is GMV VGS and to the source what we have is a resistance RS. Across the drain there is a resistance that is connected is equal to RD so now that we need to identify what is the output impedance at this particular node R out and we know that this R out is basically composed of two resistances one is RD the other one is the resistance by looking across this particular view now I know that this Rx is going to be RD in parallel with the resistance that I need to find which I am labeling it as Rx here. So to simplify the analysis, we just try to remove Rd from our discussion so that what we really want to find is the value of Rx and then later on we can add them in parallel to the value of Rd to find the R. Now as we know there are two steps that we have to perform whenever we try to identify the impedance. The first time is to kill the input source. Now in this case, this is done by making this V in to the ground so that the V in becomes zero over here. Now, what happens to the value of VGS? As you know, the gate is at the ground, whereas the source is not at the ground. So still, we have a potential difference between the gate and the source, as well as the potential difference between the body and the source. Because of that, these current sources will still exist in the discussion. And the second one is to apply Vx and measure Ix. So I'm just going to add a Vx and then try to measure the current Ix over here. As we know, Vx or any voltage is basically generally composed of a current and a resistance. Here in this part of the circuit we have the resistance R0 and Rs. So I'm just going to write that Vx is basically composed of a drop across R0 plus the drop across Rs. Now the drop across R0 is basically given by the current that is flowing through R0 and the drop across Rs is basically given by the current that is flowing through Rs. Now let me draw the current that are looping around this R0. So here the current Ix basically flows through R0 and then through Rs and then goes back to my Vx. Whereas the current GM VGS loops around this local loop in opposite direction to Ix and even our GM v, v, VGS basically loops around this. So here it is GM v, VBS. I wrote it wrong. And again this current is goes in opposite direction to the Ix. So now that we will try to write the current that is flowing across R0 which is Ix and then minus GM VGS minus GM B VGS. So this is the, the total current that is flowing across R0 as well as the current that flows across RS is simply Ix times RS. Now our task is to replace this VGS and VBS in terms of Vx. So I just split this VGS as VG minus VS and look for the potential that are available across them. Now, defining the potential VGS is simple because it has been connected to ground whereas the potential across the source is nothing but the current that is flowing across the resistance Rs which I can replace with Ix times Rs. And similarly, even the VBS could be returned as VB minus Vs and that could be returned as zero and then minus Ix 
as. So, substituting them over here would lead us to gm times ix rs and gmb ix rs and the whole being multiplied with r0 and here we have rs. So, just performing a simple arithmetic would lead us to the value of rx that is equal to vx by ix and that is equal to gm plus gmb rs r0 and then rs. Now I am just going to combine this term into, into a new variable gm prime. So again reducing this expression into gm prime rs r0 plus rs. If if this value is pretty larger than compared to rs, then we can approximate this expression as gm prime rs r0. And again, if this quantity is pretty larger than the value of r0, we can further approximate this value to be gm prime rs r0. I'm just going to rewrite this expression into a different form so that we try to write it as gm prime r0 times rs. Now here I just try to develop an intuition across this. Now what I have seen across rs, whenever I look through the drain terminal, this rs is basically being amplified by gm prime times the r0. Basically the intrinsic gain of the transistor that I have. Now let me go for the discussion of finding the resistance through the source. Now in that case I again redraw the circuit. Now that our objective is to find the resistance through the source and as we know that this resistance RS is going to be in parallel with the resistance that we are going to find. Now again drawing this small signal model and then killing the input source is done automatically over here so that I am not going to repeat them again. Again there is a potential difference between the gate and the source and that creates GM VGS current source and then there is a resistance R0 between the drain and the source and again since because the source is a totally different potential than compared to the body we will also have GMB VBS current source that is again connected between the drain and the source and across the drain we also have a resistance RD now we are going to define this VX as a product of I into R the resistance that I am seeing from this source is basically R0 and RD. So I can write that there is a drop across R0 and a drop across RD. Now to find the drop across R0, we need to find what is the current that are flowing across the R0. Now I am going to create a loop of this local current GM VGS as well as GMB VBS and again there is a current IX that flows through R0 and flows across RD and loops back to my VX. So now it becomes clear for us to write what drop is being created across R0. It's nothing but IX plus GM VGS plus GMB VBS, this is the total current that flows across R0 and the current that flows across RD is just simply IX times RD. We have to define the VX and VBS potentials in terms of either IX or VX. So I am just going to rewrite this VGS as VG minus VS. As we know the VG is basically connected to the ground 
and the Vs is basically connected to the positive potential of Vx. So I'm just replacing Vs with Vx over here. Similarly, I could define Vvs as Vv minus Vs, and again the same sort sort of argument could be applied, and that is basically lead to defining both Vgs and Vvs to minus Vx. So replacing this expression with chain prime times minus Vx times R naught, and then Ix. So I'm just going to bring this particular term towards the left side and then trying to define the rx as vx by ix to be equal to r naught plus rd divided by 1 plus gm prime times r naught and this could be further split to r naught divided by 1 plus gm prime r naught plus rd divided by 1 plus gm prime r naught. So I'm just going to take over these expressions to the next page and then further try to identify the intuition behind these terms. Now let us assume that this particular gm prime r naught is quite larger than the value of 1. Now if that is the case we can approximate these terms to be equal to gm prime r naught from the first term and the value of rd would look something like this. Now I'm just going to bring back the same circuit that is the value of rd and this value of rd when I'm looking through the source is basically being reduced by the same intrinsic gain of the transistor. Whereas, so this gives us a clear picture that when we look into the source terminal, it is the same 1 by gm and then that has to be added with the impedance Rd that is being lowered by the intrinsic gain. So this gives us a clear intuition that when I have a resistor being attached to the uh, source RS, this was being magnified by a quantity which is gm prime r naught times RS when I look through the drain. But the same resistance when it is being attached to the drain and when we look through the source, the resistance RD is being reduced by the same amount of magnitude which is G, gm prime times r naught. And that gives us a clear picture like how the resistance being magnified or being reduced by gm prime r naught. So now we'll just look into the second topic where we just need to discuss about the equivalent transconductance. Now let me review about the, uh, the transconductance that we have defined for a simple common source amplifier. We have defined the transconductance as the partial derivative of the composite current ID with respect to the Q point defined across the gate to source. And uh, we can also write it in terms of small signal current divided by the small signal voltage across the gate to source. Now here, this is nothing but the output current that flows or the voltage controlled current source that is defined in the circuit and this one is nothing but our input. Let me take a general system which has the same voltage controlled current source and we want to define a general transconductance for a general circuit for which I'm just going to draw a system that contains a, a voltage controlled current source and which will also have some kind of impedance in it in parallel with it. And now to this circuit I have an input V in and it also has an output 
we out. As I told, it also has voltage controlled current source. Now I'm just going to define a parameter GM, capital GM, uh, which is again has to be defined in the same fashion that it was defined for our common source amplifier. Now as we know, when I try to directly map, it has to be a partial derivative of composite output current or with respect to the Q point process and that has to be equated with the small signal output current divided by the small signal input that was being applied. Now the point that I have to make here is that how would we measure this current across the output? The way that we can do is to short this circuit node to the ground so that what happens is we can directly measure what current that was flowing inside the circuit. Now the circuit that I have drawn is basically the small signal model. So that's why I could be able to short it. Now when I short it, I can write the expression of capital GM to be V out that is connected to the ground and I am trying to measure this component over V in that I have applied. Now this V out, this could be translated to this expression is is trying to define to be a constant quantity or over here this could be defined by defining the small signal VDS to the ground or the DC parameter VDS as our constant. Now let me take over this capital GM expression and then try to apply across the common source amplifier. I'm just going to take a simple common source amplifier to compute the transconductance of this particular circuit. So I'm just going to draw the small signal model where I apply V in towards the gate and the source node is at the ground and the drain terminal is basically being connected across RD and I just want to compute the transconductance of this small signal model. Now between the gate and the source I just apply the V in and because of that there is a current that flows between the drain and the source which is whose value is GM VGS and again it might have some resistance or not. Now to find the equivalent transconductance the first task is to short this output node to the ground. So I'm just shorting this node to the ground and then trying to measure the output current I out. Now this I out will not enter into our RD. Why? Because both the ends of the resistance is basically the same potential. And similarly it never enters into our R0 because of the same reason both the ends of our resistance R0 has the same potential. Now, which is nothing but our I out is, a, is defined as GM VGS and the transconductance definition is capital GM is basically defined as your output current divided by the input voltage and the output current is nothing but GM VGS and our V in is nothing but our VGS. So both of VGS terms would get cancelled and that translates to the same GM. Now let us look into a bit complicated circuit and then try to define the equivalent transconductance of that circuit. So let me take the common source amplifier with the source degeneration resistance RS and that I'm just going to apply a V across the gate terminal and we need to find the equivalent transconductance for this particular circuit. Now again trying to define the small screen model for this circuit would be apply V in across the gate and then the source 
node is basically connected to the resistance RS and then the drain node is connected externally to your resistance RD and then the output node is also being defined across the drain. In this case first let me fill the internal part of the MOS transistor with the equivalent model of it. So since there is a potential difference between the gate and the source, obviously there happens to be a current that flows between the drain and the source whose value is GM VGS. And again, I'm just going to take the R0 into account. And again, what happens is the source node is not at the same potential as our body. Because of that, there would be a current which is GMB PBS that flows between the drain and the source. Now, before I start shorting this output node to the ground, I first have to define some set of rules. The first rule is basically to draw the small signal model of the given circuit. The second one is to freeze the circuit and then short the output node to ground to in order to measure the current IO. So I haven't stated this statement before but this time it becomes really important for us to state that. As a first part we have done this particular step. The second one I have to freeze the circuit in the sense like before I short this particular output node to the ground uh, I should I can do any changes that I wanted. But once you short the output node to the ground the circuit is freezed. So you, 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 you cannot change the circuit after that. So with this set of rules, I'm just going to short this output node to the ground in order to measure the I out. Now this current would actually will not enter into this particular node because I have the same potential for the both the ends of the drain resistance RD. Now the only way that the output current I out can go is through these three paths. So I'm just going to write the sum of these three component current as the I out in the next page. So I'll just make a copy of this and then put it on to the next page so that we'll have some reference to do our expression. So coming back to the I out expression, I can write this as a summation of GM VGS, then GMV. VBS and then the current that flows across the resistance could be defined as the potential difference across the R0. So the potential at this end is basically a ground and the potential over the other end is basically Vs that is the potential across the source. So it would be 0 minus Vs divided by R0 is the current that flows through the resistance R0 from top to the bottom. And now we just need to expand the terms VGS and VBS where gate is basically connected to the VN. So I have equated the gate potential to VN and the source is basically nothing but the current that flows across the resistance RS. And we know this all of these three components of current would merge at this particular node and then the I out times the resistance RS. In the similar way, I can even redefine VBS as VV minus VS where we know that the body of this particular circuit that is that we are talking is basically connected to the ground. So I write only the drop across the resistance RS. And in general, the potential VS is nothing but I out times RS. So the I out expression can be redefined with all these expressions and that would lead to GM V in and then minus GM I out RS and then GM B into minus I out RS and then I out RS by 
or not. So I can just combine all these I/O terms and then move move them towards the left hand side and then which is G and P to the right side and I'm going to take the I/O in common and that would lead to one plus G M R S and then G M B R S and R S by R naught and we know like we can combine the gm plus gmb as gm prime so i'm just going to use the gm prime from the after this particular expression so the capital gm is nothing but i out by vn and that would lead to an expression which is defined as gm divided by 1 plus gm prime rs plus rs by r naught now cross multiplying this r naught to the other sides of the expression would lead us to an expression which is gm r naught divided by r naught plus r s plus gm prime r s into r naught. So that completes the part A video of our discussion.